Let's start look at how the merge sort algorithm works, an alternative way to sorting data, alternative to insertion sort or bubble sort. So merge sort really has two key broad stages to it. The first step we do is divide the list in two. And we just repeat this step until all of our lists contain one item only. So the term I'm going to use is a sublist. A sublist is just part of our original list. We end up with lots of individual sublists because we keep dividing it in two. When all of our sublists have got one item in only, so I've got loads of these individual sublists, I start merging two sublists at a time so that the items as they're put together are kept in order. And I repeat step three until I've only got one list again. So I end up with there being one list like I had in the start. So the two broad stages here are the divide stage. We divide, we divide, we divide, we divide. We split up our list into one item only. Then we merge it together two at a time to recombine and have it sorted. So out of the three sorting algorithms we've looked at, this is our most complicated one to implement and also the weirdest to do, I would argue. It's not super difficult to do, like bubble sort can be, but it is a bit weird and quite hard to understand how it translates to code. Let me show you how I would recommend we, we lay this out. First of all, I would always, if it's not nice and big at the top already, copy down your list. And this one here, I would box. So we're not circling it, we're boxing it to represent this being a list. And my first step is to divide this list in two. So I want there to now be two sub lists. I'm going to draw these underneath. Well, unfortunately here, I have not got a clean division. I feel like when I was doing binary search, we're not always going to have a clean division by two. So we have to choose one of these sub lists to be bigger than the other. Personally, I always do the left-hand side one to be bigger, but it doesn't actually matter. You just have to choose and then stick with that principle. So let me draw the left-hand side list with three, nine, four, and seven. And I'm going to box it to represent this now being its own list. And the second one is 15, 13, and five. At this stage, I'm not even thinking about sorting it. I'm just dividing. And now we repeat the step. So we keep dividing these sub lists in two until they only have one item in them. This left list is quite a nice division. I've just got two items on either side, but my right hand list, I'm gonna to need to be consistent and do the same thing as before. Just put 15 and 13 in the left hand side, and then this five sat on its own on the right hand side. Now I've still got to keep dividing because I've only got one of these sub lists with one item in. So three gets on its own, nine gets on its own, that all of them will at this stage. And that is our first stage of merge sort now complete. We've now got all of these items on their own in their own separate sublists. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine two at a time, keeping these in order. So I'm, I need to actually pay attention to what the question's asking now. We want it in ascending order. So three and nine just get recombined in exactly the same way as do four and seven. So they were already in ascending order. 13 and 15 need to get swapped over. And five, because I always need to do things two at a time, I'm dividing in half and I'm combining it in a two at a time. Because five hasn't got someone to combine to, five is kind of sat on its own for another step. It will get combined in a second because these two lists can get combined. This way you've got to think to yourself, you know, you've got to do the order in your head basically. So three needs to go first, then four, then seven, then nine. When we are merging, we are ensuring they are kept in order. Then I can combine five with this sub list. So five should come at the start, then 13, then 15. And now I've left with two sub lists, which I can combine. Now you can see I've deliberately drawn effectively two separate sides here. Once I start dividing, once I do my first division by two, we kind of need to keep these sides separate until right at the end. Right at the end, we can now combine these two lists again together, but try and keep them separate. Don't be tempted to kind of combine across this divide until we reach right at the end where we only have two sub lists left. So now we really have to do it just all in our head. Well, three is our smallest number here, then four, then five, then seven, then nine, then 13, then 15. I recombine to have one list like I had at the start, and now this is sorted. Maybe now you can see why I would describe it as being a little bit weird, especially the last few steps where you are really combining it in your head. It doesn't seem like something a computer would be able to do, 
or be able to do in a kind of algorithmic way. It can. It's just the code is quite complicated. And again, it being weird in the sense that we have to keep dividing. Why do we do this? And why can we only do two at a time? Again, that links to the code, which is a little bit weird. We will have a quick look at the code, but let's do another example with an alphabetical list. I want to put this into ascending alphabetical order. Like I said in the last video, it's worth writing down the alphabet if you are faced with an alphabetical question because we don't want to be thinking about it in our head. It's just you're asking for yourself to make a mistake. Although, of course, the first few steps of merge sorts don't even involve ordering at all. So this first division here, I do have a clean division, so I can just separate three on each side. But the next division is not going to be an even one. Again, let's stick to convention and do two on the left and one on the right. I keep dividing. We're now going to have all of our sub list of one item in only, which is what I want. OK, now I start combining, which I always do two at a time. So this is where having it all written down alphabet is helpful. So green and red are currently in order. So I just combine these. Copy down purple, we'll deal with it in a second. Blue and pink are currently in order. And now I can combine the next two at a time. So purple should go between green and red. And teal can just slot on at the end of this list. And now the last step where we sort of have to, it feels like abandon the algorithm, just do it ourselves. But that's just how we need to show it. The blue is going to come in first, then green. Then I've got pink and purple, which both start with P but I comes before you. So we look at the second letter. So because of this, pink comes before purple. Then we have red, then we end it up with teal. And that's our answer. Do try and keep it on two separate sides and make sure we are only ever doing two at a time. Don't bridge this divide until right at the end. People would sometimes draw arrows between the boxes, but I think it's a bit overcomplicated. This will do as your workings out. So I will not look at this code in detail because it is too much for GCSE. The merge sort code is very odd and to understand you've got to understand a few concepts which only exist at A level. So I'm just putting it here really for your interest if you are interested. Not something you'd be expected to really understand in any detail. The other one is potentially a bit more but not this one. Although if we want to have a look at it we kind of can roughly see what's going on. I can roughly explain what's happening here. Well we can see at the top we are doing a division by two and we're creating a left list and a right list. These are the sub lists we're talking about. This is us doing our divide step. And we can't see a loop at the top. The code here is kind of doing the same sort of thing as a loop would. This is the A level concept, it's called recursion. So we're dividing the list in two, that's our first stage. Once all of that is sorted, we then start to combine two lists at a time. I've got I and J because I've got two lists I'm dealing with here, left and right. And we're trying to merge these two lists together. The bottom while loop sort of mop up a situation where you've got an uneven list. You've got three on the left hand side and two on the right hand side, for example. So we've got three while loops and a weird bit of recursive code here. But we can see the kind of division step and the merge step at the bottom. Also at A level, we go into more detail about the evaluation between these different algorithms. But for now, we can just do a, a general summary. Well, they all do the same job. They all sort data. Bubble sort and insertion sort aren't really used in practice because they are slow. However, if we were to give them a positive, both will use less memory than merge sort. Because merge sort has to split the data set into so many different lists, that takes up more memory. And also, the recursive bit I was talking about also causes more memory to get used. However, like I say, merge sort is just a lot faster. If I was to plot this on a graph, we can see bubble and insertion sort have got the same line. And compared to the binary search graph I showed you a few videos ago, this is a you know very big difference. Binary search had a very flat gradient. Unfortunately, sorting is just quite a slow process for a computer, no matter what we use. Merge sort is pretty much the best we have. So it also shoots up quickly, but you can see the gradient for merge sort is less than the gradient for bubble and insertion. And this gap we can see emerging will increase as the size of the data set increases. So merge sort does outperform bubble and insertion, but uses more memory as a slight disadvantage.